the history of the world. It was already planned out before we ever existed. Since the dawn of time, through every chapter of history, one divine purpose has guided all things. Yahuwah, in his infinite wisdom, foresaw that both the heavenly hosts and humanity would stray. Yet, he prepared a masterful plan, reaching through eternity, to bring all creation back to him, restoring what was lost and renewing what was broken. In the eternal plan of Yahuwah, we'll explore this divine story, a carefully woven plan that begins with the first human beings, and unfolds into the promise of an everlasting kingdom. It all begins with one fateful decision in the garden, Adam and Eve's choice to disobey Yahuwah. This single act brought sin into the world, creating a deep need for salvation and preparing the way for a Redeemer. The Fall of Adam and Eve Humanity's need for redemption begins in the Garden, in Eden, where a single act of disobedience echoes through every generation. Let's take a look at the origin of sin, and the first promise of redemption, a promise that stretches across history. In Genesis 3 verse 15, it tells us this, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This verse is a prophetic promise from Yahuwah about the coming Redeemer, Yahusha, who would ultimately defeat Satan. The bruise on the heel signifies the suffering Yahusha would endure, but his ultimate victory would be like crushing the serpent's head symbolizing Satan's final defeat. In Romans 5 verse 12, it says this, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. This verse connects Adam's sin to the fallen state of humanity, indicating that the need for redemption started with this act of disobedience. It highlights that sin, and consequently death, affects all people, underscoring the necessity for a savior. In the wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 24, it tells us this. Nevertheless through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. This verse in the Apocrypha attributes the origin of death to Satan's envy, illustrating that the fall was not merely a human failure but part of a larger spiritual battle between good and evil. The plan unfolds through Adam's line. Genesis 5 verse 24, it says this, And Enoch walked with Yahuwah, and he was not, for Yahuwah took him. Enoch's close relationship with Yahuwah signifies the ongoing connection that could be achieved with Yahuwah even in a fallen world. This illustrates how, despite humanity's fall, some could still seek and live faithfully under Yahuwah's guidance. Genesis 4 verse 26 tells us this. And as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Anash. Then men began to call on the name of Yahuwah. This verse marks the beginning of a renewed commitment to worship Yahuwah, showing that Seth's lineage maintained a connection to Yahuwah, contrasting with Cain's lineage, which represented rebellion. In the Apocrypha, Sirach 44 verses 17 to 18, it says this. Noah was found perfect and righteous, in the time of wrath he was taken in exchange, therefore was he left as a remnant unto the earth when the flood came. Noah is praised as a righteous man who preserved humanity, showing that even during judgment, Yahuwah's faithfulness continues through individuals who are obedient to his ways. Through the lives of Enoch, Seth, and Noah, we witness Yahuwah's commitment to keep a faithful remnant, ensuring that even in dark times, his plan endures. Noah's role as a preserver of righteousness. What does it take to stand against the world gone astray? Noah's story reveals the courage of obedience in a world of corruption and the power of one faithful man to preserve a future plan. In his faithfulness, we glimpse Yahuwah's commitment to save, even when the world has chosen otherwise. In Genesis 9 verse 11, it tells us this. Thus I establish my covenant with you, never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. Yahuwah's covenant with Noah is a promise of mercy, ensuring humanity that while sin may be judged, his desire is ultimately to restore rather than destroy. In the wisdom of Solomon 14 verse 6, it says this, 
For in the old time also, when the proud giants perished, the hope of the world governed by thy hand escaped in a weak vessel, and left to all ages the seed of generation. This verse honors Noah's obedience, showing that despite the corruption surrounding him, his righteousness preserved humanity and Yahuwah's promise. In Noah, we see a preserver of righteousness, a single man whose faith in Yahuwah allowed humanity to survive and ensured that the promise of redemption would live on. The Patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob Through the lives of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we see Yahuwah's plan through his covenant taking shape, promising not just land or lineage, but a blessing that would reach every corner of the earth. These patriarchs walk by faith, showing that Yahuwah's promises never fail. Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3, it says this, Now Yahuwah had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This calling sets the foundation of the covenant. Yahuwah's promise to bless all nations through Abraham points forward to Yahusha, through whom ultimate blessing and salvation would come. In Genesis 17 verses 4 to 5, it tells us this. As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. The renaming of Abraham signifies his role in Yahuwah's plan. Abraham's descendants will be both biological and spiritual, impacting generations and embodying Yahuwah's covenant of faith. Each of these men carried the promise forward, demonstrating that faith and obedience can bring Yahuwah's blessings to generations yet to come. Joseph from prisoner to leader of a nation. Joseph's journey from betrayal to blessing demonstrates how Yahuwah's plan can turn even the darkest circumstances into light. From prison to palace, Joseph's life embodies Yahuwah's power to transform trials into triumph, preserving his people and fulfilling his promise. In Genesis 37, 39-45, these chapters recount Joseph's journey from being sold into slavery to becoming a powerful leader in Egypt. His trials, faith, and wisdom allowed him to save Egypt and his own family during famine. Joseph's story exemplifies Yahuwah's providence, where even suffering and betrayal serve a larger purpose. Despite adversity, Joseph's faith transforms him into a vessel of salvation. Genesis 50 verse 20, it tells us this. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but Yahuwah meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Joseph's acknowledgement of Yahuwah's hand over his life teaches about divine sovereignty. Yahuwah can turn evil intentions into good outcomes, aligning with his redemptive plan. Joseph's faith through adversity serves as a beacon of hope, showing how Yahuwah can bring good even from suffering. His story encourages us to trust Yahuwah's purpose in every season. The Israelites and the Law of Yahuwah With the giving of the Law, the Israelites are chosen as a nation of priests, set apart to represent Yahuwah's holiness to the nations. Their obedience becomes a testament, showing the world what it means to walk in Yahuwah's ways and be a people called by His name. Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6, it tells us this. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Yahuwah's covenant with Israel sets them apart as his special treasure, calling them to represent him to the world as a kingdom of priests through obedience to his laws. In Deuteronomy 7 verse 6, it says this, for you are a holy people to Yahuwah your Elohim. Yahuwah your Elohim has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. This verse reiterates Israel's chosenness and the holiness expected of them. Yahuwah's choice is based on his love and commitment rather than Israel's strength or merit. Through Israel's unique calling, 
We see Hua's desire for a people who reflect his character to the nations, living as his representatives. The Prophets and the Promise of a Savior Through the Prophets, Yahuwah speaks of a coming Savior, a King who will bring peace and justice. These promises inspire hope, assuring his people that even in exile and trial, Yahuwah has not forgotten them. The Prophets' words echo with the promise of a Redeemer who will fulfill every covenant. In Isaiah 9 verses 6 to 7, it tells us this. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty Elohim, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. This prophecy foretells the birth of a divine ruler who will bring peace and justice, foreshadowing Yahushua's role as the eternal king. Jeremiah 31 verses 31 to 34 says this, Behold, the days are coming, says Yahuwah, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, I will put my law in their minds, and write it on their hearts, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Yahuwah promises a new covenant, transforming the law from an external command to an internal guide, fulfilled through Yahusha and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Prophet's words carry the hope of salvation, encouraging believers that even in dark times, Yahuwah's promise of a Savior remains. King David and the Promise of an Eternal Kingdom Through David, Yahuwah establishes a royal line that will one day bring forth the Messiah. David's covenant is a promise of kingship and eternal kingdom, a vision that finds its ultimate fulfillment in Yahusha, the King of Kings. 1 Samuel 16 verses 12 to 13 tells us this. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, with bright eyes, and good looking. And Yahuwah said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers, and the spirit of Yahuwah came upon David from that day forward. David's anointing shows Yahuwah's choice of a leader who would be faithful to him, setting a precedent for Yahusha, who would be born from David's line. 2 Samuel 7 verses 12 to 16 tells us this. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. This covenant promises David an everlasting dynasty, pointing to Yahusha as the ultimate fulfillment of this prophecy. David's story reveals Yahuwah's desire to establish a lasting kingdom and foreshadows the coming of the eternal king, Yahusha, the remnant and their redemption from captivity. Yahuwah's promise to gather a faithful remnant highlights his enduring mercy and faithfulness, showing that Yahuwah will not abandon those who call upon him. In Isaiah 10 verses 20 to 21, tells us this, And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel will never again depend on him who defeated them, but will depend on Yahuwah, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant will return. This prophecy describes the return of a faithful remnant who will rely solely on Yahuwah, showing his commitment to those who trust in him. Amos 9 verses 14 to 15 says this, I will bring back the captives of my people Israel, they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, I will plant them in their land, and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land I have given them, says Yahuwah your Elohim. This verse speaks to Yahuwah's promise to restore Israel permanently, using imagery of planting to symbolize stability and a lasting return. This remnant represents the heart of Yahuwah's faithfulness, showing that even in trials, he preserves those who remain devoted to him. The Coming of Yahusha Yahusha's arrival fulfills the ancient promises of redemption, offering salvation and bridging humanity back to Yahuwah. His life, death, and resurrection embody Yahuwah's ultimate gift, bringing hope and a new covenant written on the hearts of his people. John 3 verse 16 tells us this. For Yahuwah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
This well-known verse reveals Yahuwah's deep love for humanity, demonstrated through Yahushua's sacrifice. Yahushua's coming fulfills the promise of redemption, offering eternal life to all who believe. Hebrews 9 verse 12 says this, Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. This verse explains Yahushua's role as the high priest, whose sacrifice of his own blood fulfills and replaces the old sacrificial system, providing permanent redemption. Through Yahushua, Yahuwah's love takes tangible form, transforming the eternal plan into salvation. Redemption and Restoration Yahuwah's plan concludes with a promise of a new creation, where pain and sorrow will be no more. This is the hope of eternity, where Yahuwah's people live in everlasting peace, a restoration of all things that brings his story full circle. Revelation 21 verse 4 reads like this, and Yahuwah will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. This verse captures the fulfillment of Yahuwah's redemptive plan, where he restores creation to a state of perfection, free from pain and suffering. In the Apocrypha, Sirach 17 verses 24 to 25, it says this, But unto them that repent, he granted them return, and comforted those that failed in patience. Return unto Yahuwah, and forsake thy sins, make thy prayer before his face, and offend less. This passage emphasizes Yahuwah's mercy, reminding that those who turn back to him receive forgiveness and comfort. It ties into the theme of redemption, where Yahuwah offers hope and a path back to righteousness. Yahuwah's story reaches its fulfillment in a restored creation, where his people find peace and joy in his eternal presence. Let us remain faithful, knowing that in the end, Yahuwah will exalt the humble and bring justice to the oppressed. If you found this video edifying, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. May your name be glorified in all the earth. Thank you, Father, for the gift of life. Hallelujah. In the name of the Holy One of Israel, the Messiah, Amen, Father, Amen.